but we talked a little bit about what a frame is, what's a media frame, or what's an Ackland frame, as opposed to all the others. Um, just a quick background, our frame was, was originally created for trucks, and it was created by a guy named Jerry Ackland, uh, passed away several years ago, wonderful guy, but he saw a truck like this going down the road, and it, it was one of those one of those deals where it had a bead on the outside of the vinyl and the bead slid into a channel like a track and you know there's another there's a couple other systems out there that have that um and the the, the heat weld had given out and it was flapping down the road so jerry just kind of said you know what there's got to be a better way so we came up with this two-layered system and uh you lock them together and they self-tension and um this is kind of a picture, another picture of, of what prompted us to invent our frame. We still do trucks, but you know, uh, it's really taken on a life of its own on other surfaces. So um, this is a, a, rough, a rough idea of how it works. There's two layers. In between the two layers goes your vinyl. And this doesn't show all the, all the details, but that makes it tight without any moving parts. Um, questions real quick about the functionality of, of our original frame? Anybody? Okay, the one thing that this picture doesn't show that we've done probably in the last 18 months is in this bottom layer, we, we put something called a screw boss. It's a guide so that when this screw goes down through a pre-drilled hole, it drops into a channel. The channel is like a trough and it hugs both sides of the screw and the screw creates its own threads and they're reusable. The alloy is just the right you know, of uh, hardness actually to where it creates reusable threads and it's really sweet. You can change out your graphics over and over and um, it's, it's fast and a lot of people just, they keep saying, well, how does it tighten the vinyl? Well, it does, but I won't get to that too much. The big thing about, about this frame and some other good ones out there, you want simplicity. You want, if you can, something that you don't have to worry about outfitting the vinyl or putting a perimeter or a fabrication element on your vinyl because and people never seem to think of this besides the obvious added cost when you have to have your vinyl uh, fabricated with some kind of perimeter um, that takes more time and it takes more cost sometimes more freight but also when you're out on the job site and something doesn't fit and this happens all the time because customers don't necessarily give you the right uh, measurements or because maybe whoever estimated the job didn't measure it exactly right. Or I don't know how many times we've done a truck. When I got over to the passenger side, there was a dent or a reflector or a placard and I had to go around it. And now because everything was pre-fitted with this perimeter, there's no play. There's no room to adjust. And now you've got huge expenses, mad customers, you know, got to come back, do more freight. It's an absolute nightmare from something so simple. So one of the things when you look at any media frame, not just ours, but you try to look for something where the vinyl can have a raw edge or the media can have a raw edge and you don't need that fabrication, whether that's a grommets or a cable or um, that heating stuff. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Questions so far? Actually, I do have a question on that screw boss. Yes. So let's say we put this onto a truck and I tag into that screw boss. And then the next time we install secondary graphic six months down the line, our screws don't line up exactly where the other screw was. Does it still yeah. work? Absolutely. Good question. That's one of the, the things I love is um, it doesn't, you can reuse them, but sometimes people lose track. Was that, you know, on the left or was that on the right? Doesn't matter. If you don't use the same hole, it will just cut new ones. And probably that's even better. Not that anything bad happens to the old ones, but, uh, you know, either way, it works great. No problem. Um, question answered? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and just so you guys know, on our website, I have it pulled up right here. There's, uh, there's underneath resort or videos. There's something called the Ask Acklin Show. There's some knucklehead there that gets on and answers questions. And one of them is episode four, and it goes into 
vinyl size, pre-drilled holes, the screw boss. It shows it a lot. We have a, a very content-rich website. You can go there anytime and probably get a lot of these questions answered through video or through FAQs. Can an older frame be retrofitted with a new screw boss? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. But it, I'll tell you what, if you have a situation where that old frame, for some reason, is looks like a machine gun got to it or, you know, you're having a problem with, I have only one situation that I can remember where one of our customers does a lot of casinos and they, um, they had been changing them out, but their guys were using these big impact drills and the screw at the time was just going through a real thin piece of metal and they would strip them out. And, um, that's kind of what led us to to redesign the thing. We replaced them for them because we want you happy, and these frames are designed to do lots and lots of change outs without a problem. So if you got an issue, call me. Okay, we'll figure something out. Um, okay, let me see if I covered these bullets. We'll go to the next one. Um, ours no special tools. Okay, that's another thing. Some of these systems do actually there's one system in particular it's not a bad system it's fairly expensive but it's it's durable and but it requires a special tool that costs hundreds of dollars and without the tool there's no way to tension the vinyl and so if you've got a job or multiple locations or multiple trucks and they're not in the same place or even if they're in the same yard you're just so limited unless you have a bunch of tools which all of a sudden runs you thousands of dollars so we try to make ours almost a do-it-yourself type product to where you could even sell it to a client. And in order to save them money, you say, look, I'll come and do this initial install and I'll show you, you know, how to basically change out the graphics. And when you need graphics change, you come to me for the printing. If you want us to change it out, we can, or you can even do it yourself. Sometimes that's a good selling piece. So other than our two, two extrusions, everything we have can be bought I mean, if you didn't have screws, you could run to Home Depot and get number 10 sheet metal screws and it'll work great. Um, so we just, simplicity, and that's one of the things I attribute to Jerry Ackland. And I just, you know, he always said the beauty is in the simplicity. Keep it simple. And so that's really what we try to do for sure. Are these um, uh, number 10 self-tapping sheet metal screws? Um, you know what? That's a good question too, because uh, there's self-tapping and then there's self-drilling and then there's sheet metal screws, and sometimes that terminology is interchanged. What I tell people is they're the best one, the most uh, reliable label is the spiral tip sheet metal screw, not the one with the drill bit. Okay. Um, the, the cutting bit will work, but it bores a, a hole that's a little bit bigger, and it's just not as secure for the long term. So if you're in a pinch, you could use them. But we, we do supply screws with all the frames that we sell. And we give twice as many as what you'll need. We, we send pan head screws because they look pretty and people like them. But screws because from an installation standpoint, the guys like them better. You get more torque. They don't fall out of the drill. And you don't take a chance on puncturing the vinyl if you slip off the screw. You know what I mean? By the way, uh, we've got display boards. If you, you probably, some of you guys have them, I know. Um, we don't charge for them. They're 12 inch by 18 inch display boards, and you just got to pay the freight. Uh, cost effective for customers. And this is another thing with any media frame. I can't encourage you enough that sometimes people actually forget when they're selling the job, they'll give the quote, and most of the time, You'll probably beat another signage alternative, another sign product by, I don't know, 20, 30% is not uncommon that we would come in at a lower price point than um, other types of, of signage. But I always encourage people right next to the quote, even if you haven't even talked about it or the customer doesn't know if they're ever going to change the message, show them, here's how it is for the initial cost. It's uh, $2,000. But every time you change this thing, it's going to cost 800 or whatever that replacement cost is. When they see, oh my gosh, if we're ever going to change it, this is the only way to go. I mean, we're P 
people that have to pull off decal wraps off of box trucks and semi trailers or even off of some walls, they're like, I'll never get that stuff off and reprep the surface and then do another wrap. Um, the media is more, the installation is more, the removal is more, the prep is more. So always show the price of the product and the price of the future change out because that's usually what closes the deal. Um, I've already mentioned it's a repeat revenue product. That's kind of obvious, but I think sometimes, you know, we're, we're going out <laughs> trying to create business and make that sale that we sort of lose track of, of those people that have frames. So I would say everybody who ever buys a media frame from you ought to be in its own separate little golden database so that you can stay in front of them because you guys know we don't sell direct. We sell only to um, sign people. And we get people every week trying to get into our website and we don't let them in. We don't give them pricing. We protect our clients, you guys. But we do have some people who will call and go, look, man, I got this frame. I don't know who did it. And we still don't sell to them. But because, you know, personnel changes at shopping centers or at the customer's place of business or sign guys go out of business. I mean, different things happen. And there are reasons why people don't know who to call. Now, we still won't sell to them. We'll do our very best to figure out who sold it to them in the first place. But I would just really uh, push these kind of products as a membership type thing and really know who's got them and stay in touch with them so that when Gosh, we just had somebody at a campus. They bought media frames through a sign company, and you know the colleges now are getting paid from these sponsors that want to reach college kids. But very likely that the person who bought those is not going to be around in a couple of years, and uh, whoever takes their place isn't going to know how to change, you know, how to how to get the faces replaced. I know it sounds obvious, but I see it all the time. So just remember what a repeat revenue product this is and keep talking to your people. Another reason that I think media frames of all kinds should be in every sign shop is they're perfect in a pinch. Um, you guys own printers, probably most of you. Most of our sign companies we realize uh, maybe have up to a 54 inch printer. Some people definitely have the bigger ones. But in a pinch, needs something to look very good, and it needs to be up tomorrow. We all know people have these crazy expectations that they could actually get something like that tomorrow, and it's usually impossible. Media frames make it possible. If you have some stock and you have a printer, I've had people literally cover the side of a building like the next day, and uh, you can get paid really well for that. They're perfect in a pinch. I don't know anything else. And and what's cool is with ours anyway. It doesn't look like a banner. It's not people call them banner frames, and we've even started to call them banner frames ourselves just because that's what people are calling them. But I hate that term because it's not a banner. It's everything but a banner. I mean, it doesn't sag. It doesn't flap. It doesn't have washers and screws sticking out of it. It's, it's not. Um, this looks like a big, rigid sign. Cities are way more friendly. Um, you know, toward frames and vinyl than they are for banners. So uh, perfect in a pinch. And there we got a special offer for you guys at the end of this, by the way. Um, got a quick uh, quick question for you. So uh, we have a smaller printer. Um, we're experiencing um, an issue where obviously the media is much larger than our 72-inch printer can, can handle. Yeah. Um, can you do a welded banner and install these? And if so, how durable are those? Yeah, um, you can weld them, um, and we've done them. They're very durable usually. I say usually because if the welding is done right, it's great. If the welding isn't done right, you see some puckering, some, some wrinkles and things like that. So what I would suggest doing, um, we're not a printer, I'll tell you guys, but we sell a lot of printing. And at first, I just didn't want to... You know, our whole reasoning for doing this at first was everybody was buying printers. And we said, you know what, this is a great way for people to maximize that lease payment to keep their printers moving. You know, the more you print, the better your price per square foot. And most printers are sitting idle 
you know, 80% of the time from what we hear. So we didn't want to like, we were a little timid about selling printing, but we got asked so many times from people that maybe were limited to a certain size. Can you guys sell the printing? Can you, can we get it from you? We'd rather just get it all from one vendor. So, um, this is our second year of selling printing. We sell a ton of it up to 16 feet wide by in one piece and we're buying it. We're not printing here, but we're buying it right. So most people that are buying large format printing from us are getting it for between a buck 30 and a buck 65 a square foot. And um, the only time it would have a weld is if both dimensions were greater than 16 feet. So back to answer your question, Dave. Yeah, you can do it in nine times out of 10, it'll be fine. Yeah, I was just um, thinking about the short-term stuff because I I've actually got quotes from Brett just recently uh, on on the, a specific project that is outside our our print capabilities. So yeah, um, yeah, the welds are okay, uh, especially if it's something big. Usually, the bigger it is, the farther away people are, and the farther away people are, obviously, the less visible that seam is going to be. I don't recommend it on trucks. I really don't recommend it on trucks because even though it will probably hold, um, it's more obvious and, you know, 70 miles an hour, 10 hours a day with, and our frame pulls hard. When you put that top cap on, there's a lot of torque. Not to mention the liability if that thing came loose on the highway. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the reason back to how this thing got started was there was a weld up by the track on the perimeter on this other brand of frame and that's what uh why we kind of invented this in the first place or why jerry did so um does that answer it absolutely okay um i'm not going to go through this but i want to show it to you installation instructions this is a pdf it's on our website it's easy to download it tells you pretty much everything you would want to know step by step and it even has an installer's hotline um, we are available on this number, even on weekends, we try to be 24 seven or very close to it. If somebody's out on a job site and they have a problem, and this happens, sometimes a signed company will hire somebody to install it and neither one of them is very familiar with it. So we're available. We walk people through installs all the time and some of them are a little tricky, you know, oh, I'm on this building, but there's a, you know, a catwalk and I'm not sure how to get the vinyl up there. and we go through all kinds of stuff with people. So I just want you to know that's available. It's on the website anytime under resources. Make your picture frame. And then once the picture frame is in place, we call this the base plate. And you pull off uh, a tape liner on the perimeter. And it's an inch and a quarter wide strip. And that holds your vinyl in place. It's like having 20, somebody said to me yesterday, it's like having 20 hands, you know, 20 sets of hands all the way around my picture frame to hold the vinyl in place until I get the top cap on. Um, one thing everybody asks is, what about when I change it? Do I have to change the tape? The answer is no, you don't. The tape holds 75% of its adhesion for life. So you pull that liner off or you pull the banner off, let's say the vinyl and just put on a new one. Um, I mean, if you left it exposed to dirt and elements and weather, you know, you might need to replace it. But if you do have to replace it, you just put the old one on top or the new one on top of the old one and keep going. You don't have to pull it off or prep or anything like that. Um, you begin at one of the corners. This is obviously a real small frame, but you begin at a corner and you just work your way across the vinyl. The, sorry, the vinyl is always going to be the same size as the frame. You don't want it bigger or smaller. Just go with the same size. And um, you work your way across so that there's no visible slack. And then once you get the top done, you go to the bottom edge right in the center and you work your way from the center to the corner and then from the center to the other corner. And um, then you put the top cap on. And that's what this gentleman's doing here. One of the guys on this call is Jeff. Uh, he's putting the top cap on, or we also call it the cover plate. And the cover plate has pre-drilled holes. Can't really see them, but they're about every 15 inches. So the screw goes in the pre-drilled hole, pierces the vinyl, drops down into the channel, and draws that vinyl really tight. 
makes vinyl tight and wrinkle free. Here's a side view of it. There's a little claw that goes behind, and there's also um, these teeth that drop down into a channel. And you can't see the screw, boss, but it's up here too. That screw goes through the vinyl into its little sleeve, and uh, it's beautiful. There's there's some videos online that show we call it the wrinkle taker outer. You can see it in action. Here's a side view, just how it works. Um, and you'll see that if you get a, a display board too. Um, here's a change out. To change out the vinyl, you just remove the cover plate, peel back the vinyl off the perimeter, stick on the new one. Going across, reusable. Another benefit to media frames, not always a benefit with other types of signage, it's reusable. So you could literally, if they did a 50% off turf sale in May, next May they can use it again. Everything is 100% reusable. Um, another good benefit. There's the finished uh, product. There's a video on our website. This is an Jeff. This is an eight by twelve or six by eight. What size is this? Are you on, Jeff? Um, yeah, that one's an eight by six. Eight by six, and we have a time lapse video of Jeff changing out the vinyl. Actual time was twelve minutes, and they changed this one out quite a bit. And I got to tell you guys, this is at a mall in Temecula. And this mall, this is going to blow you away, this mall gets $20 per square foot revenue per month. So a 6 by 8 48 they're getting $960 a month. Forget about the cost of the sign. $960 a month from several displays. They have some 3 by 20s inside the mall. Um, that's bringing $1,200 a month each and they're sold to like local car dealers. There's a jeweler that has an eight by 14 and for a double-sided eight by 14, they're getting 5,700 bucks a month. It's unbelievable. And um, we had actually gone in with Jeff to kind of present uh, a package to them to say, look, you got about eight spaces that you're getting revenue from at 20 bucks a square foot and they loved it. I said, why don't you let us put together a portfolio, 60 spaces all the way around the mall, generate another million dollars a year, split the money with, you know, the sign company. And they ended up, you know, they merged and got new people and some new management company came in. It didn't, it didn't go, but they're still getting $20 a square foot. And this is something that I talk to the sign guys a lot about is, we're just we're just bigger than signs. I mean, signs are great, but we're advertising. That's what this is all about. It's the messaging, and that's what people will pay for. Signs they buy once, advertising they buy over and over. Signs are always based on you know cost plus margin. Advertising is based on the number of eyeballs that are going to see it. So it's extremely lucrative. We have an ebook free on our website. It's called Wallscape Billboards for Long Term Revenue. I highly recommend you download it. And, and just, I've known guys who went, and they owned like, they owned billboards. Uh, one of them retired on about a dozen faces. Faces, this guy was in his late 30s. Um, the amount of money that, the, that advertising generates is, is crazy. If I was going to start all over, what I would do is I'd go out and find places in growing areas, uh, wall scapes, display spaces, and I'd work a deal with the property owner, and we'd have a 99-year lease where I gave them, uh, you know, it's kind of like the billboard business. You could have a media company and do really well, and it's so much less money when you, all you have is an aluminum frame and uh, some vinyl. So big takeaway, easy to use. Any questions so far? That $20 a foot's pretty crazy, huh? Somebody say amen. Say amen. <laughs> I thought so. Okay. Here's another quick one. And peel that off and reprep when you could just cover it like this. This is one hour difference. You can even tell by the shadow under the truck. We did have the base plate on. And they were going to try to have this thing rewrapped. But instead they bought, you know, $4 a square foot vinyl or three or whatever they paid for it. I don't know. Um, and one hour later, 
it looked like that. And they never even had to mess with the old thing. Why would anybody go back to a wrap? I mean, there are some exceptions. So if you're a wrap guy, don't take it personal. I just mean there are a lot of cases. In fact, we were just featured in the Sign and Digital Graphics magazine where one of our customers did an article on, you know, when to use vehicle wrap versus when to use a frame. Here's another example. Uh, do we have anybody on the line who does wraps? Decal? Yep. Yeah, Dave, uh, that's what we are, is a wrap company. Yeah, Dave, you correct me, I'm not an installer, but some of the people said when you have to do a job like this one, that going over all those rivets, massaging, pop them with a pin. You lose the job based on labor costs. Um, you that's why that's why I'm looking at this product because it's it's phenomenal. It's not going to replace the wrap, you know, wrapping a car because it can't go around contoured services. So right. When it comes to box trucks, trailers, this is the way to go. Yeah. Um, here's a here's one similar kind of thing. They looked at this. The, the guys tell me they have to pop like put a pin on each rivet and squeeze the air out and massage each one. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay, here's another one. Um, damaged trailers. They get thrashed, they get ugly. How much to make that truck look nice? I don't know, but here's how it looked with a medium frame. That's not our frame, by the way, but I like the before and after, so I took a picture of it. Harsh weather in Canada, you know, with the salt on the roads and, uh, you know, sleet and snow and all that good stuff. How how are these things holding up? Are you are you selling to anybody in like Wisconsin or any of those spots? We have a company called Hauler Ads up in Canada, and they did seven trucks. It's funny they did it for Cuba. Cuba travel uh, what do they call it? Like the travel yep. tourism bureau. In Cuba. Yeah, tourism. Yeah, pictures of people on the sand in lawn chairs and sailboats going by. Um, they're promoting those in Canada right now. There's seven trucks running around. This guy's getting a monthly revenue on the trucks. Um, and yeah, they're happy. Change the way you think. Signs are not just signs, signs are advertising. That creates a repeat revenue stream, not just here's your sign. Um, I said this once, but to recap, competitive, you know, signs are usually competitively priced. Sometimes they're commodity, you know, people are buying print now and it's like how much per square foot. They don't think about anything else drives me crazy. Um, but advertising is the potential results based on the number of eyeballs. Signs typically are low to moderate price, you know, profit margin. Advertising is typically very high. Uh, signs people normally buy once. Advertising people buy on a continual basis over and over. Um, how to profit. Put some frame in your game. Versatility, cost-effective, built-in repeat business, great in a pinch. Just a little review. And then here's some real-life scenarios. Um, examples of sponsored space. This is at an outlet mall. All these people pay to be in this. And they pay the management company. The management company pays the sign company every time it gets changed out. And I do know of some places where the sign company is actually in on the revenue stream not just on the print and the install. Um, this is a mall exterior. Most of these are Southern California. Um, this is Florida. This is a signs now in Florida did this. Obviously they change it because the Beach Boys aren't always there. Parking structures are a big thing. Airports are a big opportunity. Uh, the Utah Travel Bureau put this in. Racetracks, huge. NASCAR, we have Two customers that specialize in racetracks and they get big money um, just to be there and uh, stadiums this is a University of New Mexico one of my all-time favorite jobs it's a six-story stadium these graphics are 23 by 38 if I remember right and uh, the bank paid for it Wells Fargo and then later on, they brought in Bank of the West. Instead of having two graphics like they do here, they have four. And they're getting big money for this kind of thing. And it's it's in a town. Uh, it's on a major four-way intersection. And, uh, man, the amount of money that goes through these college athletic departments is phenomenal. Um, 
You guys probably know that new sponsor. Uh, a couple other pictures before, during, after. Wish I had better pictures. Um, this is a picture of the mall I told you about that was getting the twenty dollars a square foot. Six by six here from a car dealer, seven hundred twenty a month. Um, this three and a half by twenty, fourteen hundred a month. And then here are these direct to the, and they have to change them because the models change. But um, it's a way to liven up a dealership. And the customer of ours uh, said, well, this is how you modernize graphics. There's another one, better at the beach. Um, museums, this is a museum of El Paso. Want to modernize, they wanted color in a downtown area. They don't even have any words on this, but everybody knows. Uh, metal buildings, great because metal buildings are corrugated. They're almost always 12 inch ribs or 12 inches on center. And this looks like a big rigid sign, but it's a inexpensive frame and vinyl system. New construction, I love this. This is uh, S-Mart, this is actually in Mexico, but the architects now spec the frame in and from the parking lot, I mean, you see this guy, how little he is? That's a big sign. Um, so we're getting more and more people that will call and say, hey, the architect put this in the bid. Um, the thing is, for us, what, what are the challenges, I guess, and where I would, like, <laughs> come to you guys is we don't sell direct. And so our model is we can only do this through sign professionals, but many sign professionals are so busy in a retail setting or in a kind of a reactive mode through no fault of their own. You know, they got people coming in. Most people are not gonna come in and say, uh, can I get a media frame? Because they don't know what they are. And we don't really market that way. So we just do everything we can to try to show our customers the possibilities like this, amusement parks, casinos, um, appliance centers. Look at this, this is a round wall. Our frame, flexes. This is the same wall on an intersection, big apartment complex. And I don't know what size it is. I would guess it's probably maybe six feet by 35 or something. And so just really inexpensive way. And it's a major intersection. So everybody there sees the message. Um, so that's a question. What I'm seeing there is it's you've got a radius in that? Yeah. It'll just follow the contour of a radius. Not not a real tight one. You can go around a pole or anything, but so um, this, you can go. You started with flat base and just installed it that way? Yeah, we started with the same exact frame that we have, which is a base plate and a cover plate. And the base plate has um, holes pre-drilled from our factory right. and you just mostly tap cons tack it up there and then work your way across with the drill bit and then the screw and it will hug it will do a much sharper radius than this um which is i'll tell you where we're seeing it most is stadiums because they have so many corridors and round walkways right right and right, right. so um yeah it's no additional money, there's no additional work. It just literally turns into a rounded billboard. So um, here's another thing about it. You don't have to do a rectangle. You can get funky. This is what, five, three, four, five, six, seven sided structure. Uh, again, this is some kind of trade school or college stadium sponsored. You can fit it to any as long as this, the edges are geometric and straight, this is a casino over here on the right on these pillar tapered pylons. The, when people order these, we just need to get the outside dimension of all four sides, and then we'll figure out the angle and send it to you so it fits. No additional. It's just um, easy. Directionals, old barn off a freeway somewhere. Uh, obviously, McDonald's and Marathon are paying for this bill little billboard. Um, 
This one's pretty cool. Uh, I'll wrap it up in just a few minutes, but uh, a couple more examples. This is our frame. So our customer took a couple of old bricks and scanned them and then printed the decal to look like the brick and then wrapped the frame in the decal. It looks like it's even a different shape. Um, so this is like award winning in my opinion because when it's all said and done, I mean that's literally our same three inch aluminum frame but it looks like an old brick to keep it looking you know vintage for the the tour that this house was on and they change it periodically but that's pretty cool so you can wrap them you can have them powder coated any color 150 colors instant billboards on trucks okay this is a quick quick explanation of this uh, the sign guy knew the guy who owned the building they wanted to create some revenue so they went in and created two 10 by 20s they figured each 10 by 20 could bring in uh, about 700 a month in a little downtown area. So they got 1400 a month coming in. Um, is that right, Jeff? Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Am I on track on that? Okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so he signed a lease with the building owner for 50 years to split the money. And um, it's across from a courthouse. So they ended up, first off, they put signs up here to get the things rented, get noticed. They put a phone number, 1-800-GREAT-AD. And the people who called were a lawyer and a bail bonds, because this is in the, within the line of sight of the courthouse. So the first two clients were um, <laughs> bail bonds and a, a, a lawyer, and then some, later on a politician took them. Um, here's some things people are doing innovatively on trailers doing them on trucks, selling the space. This is more stuff on trucks. I think this is the biggest single opportunity on the planet because there are 30 million trucks in North America and trucks provide massive square foot printing opportunities. It's a repeat order every time the customer changes it, it works. You can be a fraction of the cost of highway billboards. You know, the market is wide open. There's not a lot of competition. So that's just a little tidbit. We also have an ebook you can download for free that's a Sign Professional's Guide to Truck Side Advertising. Not very many people are doing it, but the ones that are are doing really great. And it's so, there's so much of it out there. Which one's gonna sell more tires? This one or that one? Kind of obvious. Call it change the world thinking. Uh, special offer for attendees, but first, do we have any questions? Um. Um, Mrs. Scott, Mrs. Scott, like when you do trucks like that that are refrigerated, are there any special things that you do? What Scott asked is if it's a refrigerated truck, they don't want you poking holes in it. So we sometimes will pre-apply VHB to the back of the frame. VHB uh, is the closest thing to an epoxy glue in the form of a tape. So we'll put it on. You can literally peel and stick the frames without having any fasteners penetrate the wall of that truck. I love it. It cuts the installation down, time down. It'll cost you, you know, another two to 300 per semi-trailer, but you probably save it in labor. If you ever want to get it off of that surface, there's a solution that 3M makes. It won't, it won't come off without the solution. I could not believe when 3M came to us and said, you can do this with no mechanical fasteners. We blew them off for two years because it just didn't seem right. But then we tested it on some local trucks, and you have to destroy the frame, and it still won't come off. This is Dave. Oh, hey, Dave. Um, okay, yeah, I, to answer your question, it holds up great. I'm in Southern California, and we tested it on some billboard trucks originally, and it was, you know, summertime, Southern California. Uh, yeah, well, I'm born and raised on Huntington Beach, but I'm in Lake Havasu, Arizona, and trust me. Okay, yeah, it's definitely beach. worse, but we will stand behind it 100% because 3M is a, a behemoth and they back it. They actually, I don't know if you guys, I don't want to go too far off topic, but they, we have a brochure, and I'll send it to anybody who wants it. They have um, built buildings out of this VHB where they, they put it on the glass build. It's a glass building with a metal frame. And so they put the VHB on the metal. 
and they did this wind tunnel test. And literally, it had the wind got up to 200 miles an hour before the glass shattered. And when the glass shattered, um, the only thing left was the perimeter where it was stuck to the VHB. So they have a Disney building, and they have they're actually starting to manufacture trailers now without rivets. They're just overlapping the vertical panels instead of having a vertical line of rivets. They just put VHB in between, and it's amazing because you know, the panels expand and contract and get this modeled look on a truck, modeled kind of like, not wavy, but the VHB also expands and contracts. So they actually look more like a mirror coming off the assembly line. So if anybody wants that information, uh, hit me up after this webinar. I'll send it to you. It's fascinating. Anything else? Um, this is Scott again. Are most of these the banner materials you use in scrim banners, or could you use uh, like I'm I'm look thinking about like a inside application for something kind of nice would be like a, a smooth banner or any other materials. Ninety percent of what's getting used is 13 ounce banner vinyl, but we recommend 15 or 18 on trucks. Well, it'll work with anything. Let me say that I've seen seven ounce. I've seen people use 20 ounce. And um, we have another frame for indoor uh, applications, which wasn't really part of this webinar, but um, it's on our homepage. It's, it's about 40% less expensive than our normal frame. It just isn't for heavy duty. Cool? Does that answer, Scott? Thanks. Yep. Okay. Here's our offer for all of you guys. If you don't have a display board, We'll ship you one. We'd like you to pay the $14.95 in shipping, but in addition to our display board, we're going to send you also a display board for the flip uh, that we call the snap cap frame and a hand, some hand samples that you can leave with customers. It's all going to come for $14.95. It probably costs us $75 or something to, to make all of it, but um, we'd love to get those in your hands. One other thing we want to offer you is if you can use one of these and you would like one at your shop or on one of your trucks in your showroom, uh, we'll do it for 50%. We'll send it to you half off because we know the best thing we can do is get this in front of people. And so after this webinar, let us know. We'll get you on 50% off. We've got links on our website to get you all this stuff. So you can get the wallscape half off. You can get a whole set of display boards. So minimum value of $195. This is the end. Let's do this. Get on the frame train. My email is Brett, B-R-E-T, not Brad. We have Brad also. Um, but Brett, B-R-E-T, at acklandmediaframes.com. I'll get you whatever you want, guys. We just want to help you build your business. We know that will help ours. Does that include shipping to Canada? Ah. Hmm. Sure. <laughs> Hopefully there's only one Canadian on this call. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. There's, I think there's another Canadian that, uh, this is Bob in Brantford, Ontario. Oh, yeah, hey, Bob. Daryl in Nova Scotia, too, is going to hit you up on that. Oh, my gosh. That's a good, there, goes, there goes 300. <laughs> Be worth it. We'll do whatever we got to do. Okay. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate it, you guys. I hope I covered it. I, I hope you can see the potential in this. We, we send out a lot of content, and we're kind of crazy about it, but we just – I heard someone say the other day, look, you're self-employed. Sometimes you got to leave the cave, go out and kill something, and drag it home. <laughs> I was like, yep, exactly. So here's uh, hoping that you guys – Keep leaving the cave and going out and killing something and dragging it home. And if we can be part of it, we really do appreciate the opportunity. Hey, your frames are in. Um, hold on.